Alright, let's finish this freaking case, man. I'm ready. Eight one twelve p.m. For event lab number one. Finally going to see the tiger on the stand. Oh my god, this kid's worn now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? I caused them the Mr. Armstrong just now. Then he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. Got I picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if what he testified is the truth. You mean you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know, but if that's the line the prosecution takes, could be in trouble. I have a feeling that we don't have the causes of uh, making evidence we're going to need. He's making evidence we're going to need. Hey, pal. The gumshoe. What are you so jumpy about, detective? Your hair's standing out, and then. That's the pot calling the kettle black, little Miss Topknot. It's not a top knot. Never mind about the hair. Just calm down, all right. I I can't just stay. I can't stand still when I don't have the job to do. Time to get wound up. Ah, no kidding. You got something you needed me to do, pal. Anything? Well, um, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. We got some prints on the last for you if you want. Uh, if you got an hour, an hour. The trial we uh will have been reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, do we? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. Then you could get some fingerprints and analysts done in an hour? You bet. In that case, would you mind taking some prints of this for me? Going back to the station anyway, could you find out whose prints are on this? Oh, hey, this is my bottle I gave you back in the morning, right? Yeah, I think it's time we solve this last mystery of who the prints belong to. Sorry, one sec, one sec. Alright, we're good. Uh, sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been gnawing at me, too. My bottle gave him Dr. Gumshoe. I'll get rid of this I'll get this the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. How dare you? I never not lost the case in my life, so the one I wanted to lose. Pretty much the final showdown, I guess. Time to separate the phonies from the real guys. January 8th, 1.56 p.m. District Court, courtroom number 4. Donkey, 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 dunk, dunk. Court will never reconvene. Mr. Kadot, did you find this Fero Tiger? I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job, no problem. Tamed him. Guy's name may be Fero Tiger, but come on. Pretty lively. Be, be careful, it still bites. Very well, please show Mr. Tiger to the stand. Um, let's please date your name occupation. Rar? Ah, oh, she's gone. I'm hiding at the table, Maya, unless there's room for me down there, too. I, uh, um, would you mind, would you, uh, what'd you say to me? I didn't know nothing, I didn't say nothing. Honest. I could guess the fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent with the judge. I got business to take care of, you hear me? So who the heck did call me into this, this hole? Was it you, Spiky? No, of course not. It was the judge. Your Honor. Oh dear, I am seem to go drop my pen. Where do I it? But my mate is carrying on with the proceeding normal. That's it. We're doing. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, who the heck was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout. I can only hear you. What do you say? There's no point struggling. You're caught in a snare. In the snare of the wall. And I'm the one that's holding you in. Too cool. Let me get under your let me get the better of your neck. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no sticky incident, mask boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie, you? I got more important things to do than watch Korean dramas. Course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us about uh, what you did in the day of the murder. Health. Phoenix Wright. You was the one who set this up, didn't you? You was gonna regret that day you ruffled the Haggard's fur. 
You forgot what I'm saying? Go. Should have brought a uh, diaper me today. Get a grip, Nick. With this testimony, the tiger's alibi. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all my time in the office. Oh, one sec, one sec. I'm a bit tied up with your business in December last year. Spent all my time in my office. Got well run on the borrow cash from tender lender every day. If we just want to check my alibi, just ask Violetta. Oh, let's have down my pen. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Cross that mission, please. Ah? Uh, what is it, please, witness, if you could refrain from shouting out that lot like that? No, no kind of games that guy is in blue eyes, please. Level life ain't no lawyer. He just punches away his stupid details till he wins. Low life, me. Listen up, Sparty. So every time you ask me something that has not related to the case, I'm gonna owe you fifty thousand dollars. Just gonna ball the cash for me. Uh, that's a one on one contract I refuse to sign. I don't think it ain't we're gonna hurt when tiger when you tangle with the tiger. Huh? Well, a good spectator sport. Spectator sport. Just a minute. That's really not. This witness is. How can I put it? Hungry tiger roaming the urban bubble. You know, on the bad side, you know, bite everyone's heads off. There is two. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. But I'll be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. Quorum that impose a penalty for any relevant pressing of uh, witnesses' testimony. Keep that in mind as it be in the cross examination, Mr. Ray. Oh, yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick. Come up from under there already, would you, Maya? Tiger's alibi. Let's see what happens if I press. I'm glad that you haven't even heard of the incident that occurred at Tres Bien. Ah, uh, you just got the big amount of right? You're trying to say I wasn't in some mob hit? Is that what you're trying to say? What's your proof then? Um, evidence, yes, well. For an attorney that makes an accusation in court, you must have evidence. That's from Lone Shark to, uh, Luya. Beginner's a guide, yeah? Ah, uh, so you're the studious type, Mr. Tiger, very good. Uh huh, why don't you ask him to represent you some, sometimes, right? Or, should I do? Nah, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it. <clears throat> Would you mind repeating your testimony? Uh, don't worry about it. It's the bus someone's gonna pay. I'm gonna press on the money. But I think you get a lot of customers at your black market loan office. It's tough for the low guys these days. Small businesses are feeling a pinch. Bosses of companies. They don't want to get a good with me. I'm their best friend. I see. That's very admirable of your witness. Yeah, as well. Tender lender's motto is win through compromise. Compromise, you know? Win through compromise. That's what it's mean. Compromise the customer to win. That's what it means. You've got it. With best friend like you, win the enemies. Let me spell it out for you, Zal. You don't put me back within three days, Spiky. Take what's due in your stupid hair. You just follow what I'm saying? Um, I'm not one of your customers. I'll press more. Mr. Tiger, what is you want? Er, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. 
This is a dead end right here, and you know it. Remember the rules. Touching the witness without evidence that of your attempt to attack is prohibited. Since early, the court will improve a penalty for such behavior. Ouch, the pain. Would you mind repeating your testimony? Am I dying here? What else is it besides the money? Were you really tied out in the entire year? You sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You, you, you see the seat? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Talking about Viola Cardavini? Cardavini? She writes everything in my schedule. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says. That's where I was. It seemed like rather sketchy schedule. Rar, he me out. Here he goes again. Hmm? This tiger did all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. Mr. Tiger, what do you want? That fell again? I don't mind only a bit more detail. Dead end try and you know it. Remember the rules? Oh, here we go. No, it's essential that we establish the witnesses alibi accurately. I agree. Victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day too? Maybe you just isn't listening, listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I never seen this young kid before. I do believe the witness's last statement was important. Um, oh, Mr. Godot, if you please, Mr. Tiger, the court asked you to address the last statement to your testimony. Help. You want an animal be, you, be a man, Your Honor? Ask him yourself. I remember this stuff. Mr. Tiger, you claim you didn't know about Mr. Glenn Elg. But it appears that Mr. Elg knew you. What? Mr. Elg left a little note on his calendar. Meet with the Tiger. And the date? December 3rd. This is December 3rd. That's the day of the murder. So, Mr. Tiger, I submit that you did indeed know about Mr. Glenn Elg. Because of the very day of the incident, you met with him. Ha 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 Not bad, you's actually not bad. Sorry. I was just messing with you. See how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's one compliment I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness, please remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. You used to call me a liar. Is that what she's doing? Oh, oh. So you were saying that you were and I have never seen that kid before is the truth. I said I'm dead serious. You better, uh, you better believe that's the truth. Huh? Then I say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. That is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. Tiger. Oh yes. Um, would you mind those in the court with us? You never actually met with the victim. It's got to be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. The donkey, donkey, donkey. I ain't no liar. I never met Glen Elk. There was some lame guy with that name, though. He went to borrow cash from me. Instead of a meeting with this guy at my office, tender lender. I waited around for him, but he never showed. I ain't never been that trying to be in joint use here. You're such a complete freaking liar, man. I see. That's all seems perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. I heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well, you may begin your cause examination, Mr. Ray. Yes, Your Honor. Didn't I tell you I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. The bill's going straight to you. Right. Grr. You frickin' frick. Frickin' frick. You 
you fucking hear that? You fucking freak. I got you. And then you're off as bucko. It's a tiger. Is there something you'd like to tell me the court about these matches? Matches? What you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. Wow. You've really never been to Tresbian before. What was a book at the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? You must been stooping around my stuff too, wise guy. What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no bra control me. Order, order, well, witness. I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Rawr. There we go. Sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me. I ain't no pussycat. I don't go back on what I said. But okay. I wasn't the joint that day. What? But this is good, alright? I might have been there, but I still never met the kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. I'm mean, this close to proving it was him. Uh, he didn't meet Glenn Ill that day. He did put poison in his coffee. He must have. That tries to be in. I was supposed to meet him. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened that door to the joint, I saw an ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table of stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, there was going to be a sort of split. I heard the cop's sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Sure right, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it. If I was... If I wait around here any longer, I ain't gonna do anything normal express. No more stupid questions. Uh... No problem. In time Troy presses you on something irrelevant, sleep pays a penalty. Mr. Goddard, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer and reason call and guilty verdict. Do it. Yes, sir. Special, special Express ain't cheap, right? Just so you should know whether you're out much of your um, as you're the pain. Oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? Alright, don't push anything unnecessary, gotcha. I will save it, just in case. You didn't actually set foot inside the restaurant then. Tiger is a busy cat. Tiger's a busy cat. I don't hang around for no one. I ain't got time to be caught up in a murder investigation. So, when exactly did you pick up the matches? When? Man, these, there are matches inside the front door. I take the friend wound up in trouble for the shop with the chef. I'm taking five bucks home. Poor gum, she was almost enough to make a man cry. Okay, I wasn't penalized. The body. You mean you saw Glenn Elm's dead body? I guess I did, but I only saw him from behind. He was wearing some raggedy bit old clothes he called a hat. What time was this? I don't know. Huh? You just know what winds me up more than anything else in the world. Watches. Well, watches. I ain't gonna pollute my paws with some picking head bigger. An adventurous Mr. Tiger, what winds you up the second most? Well, what do you think? Square watches. I got for real. All they needed to know was that something bad was going down at that place. Okay. Now I'm kinda like... A bit lost here. You're something, someone of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tiger? No one escapes the Tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a line collecting pro. And no one escapes the Phoenix clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this straight? A new line of irrelevant questioning. 
These are the floor plans for the crime scene. You say you were standing at this entrance, Mr. Tiger. From here, you f your field of vision would have covered an area something like this. Indeed, the witness would have had a clearer view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Fortunately for you, that's not possible. The quarter went through back. Who remember that between each other's tables? This is a tall partition. Why, that's true. But look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of an customer walking in ends here. Oh, dude, we just bought a gasket. From the entrance, the treasure began. You couldn't have seen the victim's seat. You did see the victim that day. As you know. Dunka dunka. Dunk 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 donkey donkey. Wrong, have you forgotten what they all meant to someone yesterday? The victim was alone at this table. Objection. But the defense just proved the point of the moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not going out, but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as a victim he had just killed and acted as a charade. That will do. The trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was his real killer who impersonated the victim? He said the killer murdered Gwenelk, and then impersonated his victim in a performance for Victor Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright revealed the identity of this criminal to the court. Who was the killer, or who was the body? The, the, the um, impersonator. I want to say it's the killer, I have no idea who the impersonator was, man. <laughs> There you go. Obviously, the killer is Fury or Tiger. Okay, the killer. No one else could have done the uh, could have done it. Oh what? Oh witness. Wow, now that's cute. You just think you can pin this all on Tiger? Maybe you just don't understand. Tiger is king of the I dare you to say that again. Come on, you got the guts. You can't threaten me, Mr. Tiger. This is a defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, but you're right. Yes, you're right. Sounds to me like it must be you all, man. No, it does have to be that. Yes, Mr. Right, don't leave me to handle this alone. Ah, perhaps I can end this, end this, uh, embarrassment. Let me see your dot. Let's just go back over. Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. Old man didn't see the victim. Oh, no, no, no. Serving girl brought him a javakino. Why well, she put something in it? No question about it, did you ever conspicuously put something white pa some white powder in there? Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? It doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the um, cues put the poison into the coffee. Objection! Yes, it was the witnesses. Oh, oh we're back. Uh, very impressive, Mr. Gadot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Huh? The hundred penalties. At last, Mr. Right? It was in my pocket. Ahem. But anyway. Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, suppose Mr. Glenn Elg, and the waitress from behind. That's your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. Did Glenn Elg was really the killer in disguise? Then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Mr. Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. Viola is sus? Someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? Uh, where is Marika? No, who is this woman? Her name is Viola Calverini. She's an employee of Tender Lender. Who's that making a big mistake? Do you know who Viola Calverini's father is? Been, you better get be going home in an armored truck tonight, if you know what I mean. You can't threaten me. Um, yeah, try it. Stop shaking, Nick. Oh, where was I? Yes, the defendant, Mr. Bird. Did the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. She had a kind of crackling laugh. 
There's just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table was nobody but Mr. Bird seems to have seen. Your piece uh, worn by the victim in his left ear when the eardrum was ruptured. In the radio show, he was supposedly listening to uh, half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice, once for real and once for a show. And Mr. Furio Tiger, the only person who could have come into the crime. So far, this is the best case of this game. I don't think it's better than some cases of one or two, but so far, this is the best case in this game, from my experience. I'm, I don't know, I'm lucky at this one. It's you. Witness, what do you have to say? That's cute. Sorry? It was alright. I could do with a guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm into this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet to give me the map right now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. I'm gonna think about it. Get on all the way up top of nice hop, right? But you just missed one out on one real important thing. But I can't be. I wasn't that joint that day. I met the kid, too. But I couldn't have poisoned them, you say here. What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tiger? Ah, uh, what a troublemaker. Troublemaker. I don't think we're going to have to need another one of those for the road. <laughs> one more steaming cup of hot testimony. I like that. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you uh, one more chance to testify. What happened to the day of the Tresbian between yourself and the victim? Oh, whoops. Yeah, I loaned out the cash. About $100,000. That day was due, uh, we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit a paycheck date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm at the flat the guy. That's right, screaming. Yes, I want half a million bucks. Get lucky, you know. If that waitress hadn't done what she would have uh, done, everything would have been over. Now I see that the principal amount you learned loaned to Mr. L was $50,000. Yeah, well, you just got the thing to take into account. Interest build uh, up fast, you know. It was three days, man. Twice then, his principal. Repayment deadline was November 3rd. Day the incident in question. I'm lucky kid. Got half a million just in time. So I ain't not have no reason to kill the kid. And you ain't got no motive. You ain't no case. It's motive? Hmm. Yes, I have one, but what is it? It's the virus. Why did this? Is, did, did it ever do that effect before? Am I dying here? I swear it's the first time I've seen that effect for the uh, witness thing. I want to press this uh, thing here. With the waitress. Waitress, you mean? The girl with the glasses and the fitness chair? Who else could have been? She hadn't gone the way. Things could have been bada bing bada boom, over and done with. Maybe I should push up, put absolutely. Well, Maggie did. What are you implying the defendant did? Um, how about you go ask Four Eyes about the half a million dollar ticket? She wanted it so bad. She poisoned those coffee. Luckily, theory, your ward has his, uh, as not held the wire lately, Mr. Tiger. Let's not forget the witness was actually at the scene, right? Bob doesn't don't exactly agree with some of the deals that sent down. I couldn't be there when the cops showed up, so I split. Uh, let's see. Your Honor. The witness's last few statements are worth a good two cups of coffee. I concur, Mr. Goddard. You will amend your testimony accordingly, witness. That will use after finish, right? Hmm. 
It was also the other option. What do you mean things would have been about over and done with? You saw there what I'm talking about the cash. I'm there to get my one hundred thousand bucks back. That's so I'm a businessman. It was all coming together before the witch got in the way. Or right, I can tell that when just that's not that's money other than recuperating the loan Mr. Tacker had no motive for killing the people. I want to amend it. Defense related to testimony amended. I want to hear the other option. Is this the other option? It just changed it? I didn't get to hear it. It's still like. The MC Bomber. He crossed the, he crossed the 100,000 for the MC Bomber is what he wanted. Objection! He weren't into the 100,000. He just intended to get back the $100,000 Mr. Algo and you, correct? I loaned the guy the cash. That's my right. Fortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were after. What are you getting at, Trite? What else would the money lender be after other than the money? Oh, the money lender would be after money. But money in a totally different league. I don't money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, Your Honor. A virus called MC Bomber. Computer virus? What did one of those do? Computer virus is a program that works havoc on the inside of the computer. A computer? What did one of those do? His beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the most important point. Virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars in the market. Several million dollars. Money, money to with no hope of ever seeing repayment would remain be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that when Elk had no way to uh, repay the money is crucial. What? When Elk was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. Duties when buckets. Skill was the collateral Mr. L put up in order to borrow the money. Trying to suggest that witness motive was to get a hold of that program. Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he is by no means an idiot, right? Feeling like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could. I didn't get that at the time. But what if he had needed the money right then? The pressure's on. The luxury had a uh, of choice tends to disappear. Do you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright? Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tra Tiger need money so that he could uh, to the tune of one million dollars? December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in the traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. How, how much of this did you know? Medical papers that can be the treatment of a young woman in question. According to these, her operation costs $1 million. And yet, when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. $1 million is a preposterous sum. Someone should sue those HMOs. No one will pay it like that. The medical association got the wind of it. The hospital would end up as deed as it didn't work. But Mr. Tiger had no choice with today. As his very life depended on it. Rawr. Order, order, order. Say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright. And he did it simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cataverini. Did you say Cataverini? Rudo Cataverini, mob boss in charge of the underworld activities in the city, and not a grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cataverini. Brar. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? That makes sense. You were desperate to uh, acquire the one million dollars Brudo Cadverini demanded of you. Not desperate, in fact. And you decided to sacrifice Glen Elm's life to pay your debt. Order, order. Oh, we get to speak before he even says it. The day of the murder, 
Mr. Tiger's sole intention was to get his hands on the CD. But Elg had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tiger knew it. But, and a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tiger preferred to say never happened. But he can, and neither can I. The lottery win. Exactly, on the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars at the lottery. Which left Mr. Tiger with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. Hell, he's no legitimate way. Oh, put some dust in it. Put some salt in his eyes. It's to be resorted through illegitimate means. That's crazy. He murdered Glen Elg and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Bird for the crime. The tiger poses, poses Glen Elg. While well, Milo Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. This said trite. This crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef would have been kept in the dark about it. Objection. Mr. Armstrong was in on the from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witches the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. In no choice but to go along with the tiger's plan. Order, order, silence, or I will declare the wah-wah-rah-rah. Who's that put on a good show, Spikey? If you just want to stay alive with the Lone Shark business, you've got to be careful. You just saying I dressed up like that kid, created a witness, and framed someone? If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail of bright that fits in my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy as that. I agree. You do? Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took up one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Mr. Bird and Ms. Bird had no way out. What, another one that's sure right? <laughs> Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, trite? What was that trick you said that Mr. Tiger performed to frame the accused? He was like the freaking lawyer. What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled with such a child's imitation. My man. <coughs> Threw yourself insulated. What insulted your honor? Mr. Tiger, you didn't just pose as the victim of the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, he posed as me. What? That's. that's. the truth. But. the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although. now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? And that it was you, standing in here, in that very court. This was a very court in the Finish it right, who put the most dis disreputable, shabby defense I've ever seen. Grr. Grr. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove this attorney who represented the recused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take that stand and testify that it was him? Gulp. Hmm. Hey. Forget about it, yeah. I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? You know pride, sir. Objection. This is a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trite, here in court we deal with people's lives. Ugh. Take a doubt is right. Your Honor, speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. Attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge. Here, what with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No. Critical hit. Ga, 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 ga. If the defense has no further evidence, the court will not excuse the witness. Circumstances surrounding Mr. Tiger are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far. Say he impersonated Glenn Allen. Say he impersonated you. None of this adds up to the murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that wouldn't place in the victim's coffee. No. Ha. Sucks to be you, white. You must be the tiger. Or you're gonna get mauled. You see it? You just see the guy? You just got that? All I managed to do here was chase him around for a bit. I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. 
Ha. I think I won't be needing a refill. I just have one more piece of evidence. One more piece of evidence and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. Then when this cross-examination is over, you were freaking go, Mr. Tiger. Hold it. A stinking gumdrop. Your Honor. Sir. Gumshoe. <laughs> Wait. Detective. Get the gumshoe. Sorry, I took so long, pal. I, I stay to everything on this. My badge that works. So here it is. My heart's the thing on this too. What is it? Is it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. What? What a recess. Sorry it took so long, pal. But I finally got the results from the lab. The results? Not the prince, pal, from his medication bottle. I'm giving him the wrong voice. Oh, so do you know who the prince belonged to? Do you think I'm some kind of a hack detective? Of course I'm not. So tell us. But the tiger's right, I knew it. Ah, uh, you bet. There is crystal all over the bottle. But if you're a kind of paw prince, alright. I think we got a man, What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since the Detective Gumshoe got here. Had everything on the line for us, Nick. I know. I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to say, but who doesn't make any difference if there's prints around this bottle now? Uh, what? Why not? We still need to produce this, um, what we need to produce at this stage of the trial. Is there irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in the blood on coffee? He had already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle? Who doesn't make any difference now? Try on every of any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie, and I've been working on some useless piece of evidence this whole time. Sir, right, I think I'm a real loser. I'm not breaking news to me, pal. Um, it's a gumshoe? Maggie, you've been working on something for me? Ellipses? Sorry, I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get you. I'll get out of your hair now. It had to gum shoe. Wait. He's gone? Is there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gum shoe works so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. No bottle. Donkey, 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 donk, donk, donk. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I don't remember what that said. Donkey 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 donk donkey the donk the donk donkey 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 donk donkey the donk Uh that answers to save? Am I dying here? <laughs> uh, like a brain fart. Yes, Your Honor. I granted you the recess so you could prepare the decisive evidence you discovered. Um yes. To keep us all in suspense, try show us. Naturally. We can assume as evidence that we'll actually stand up in court, can't we? Think of Phoenix. The only gum shoes hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna uh, use it gonna waste? I'm bad. I ain't been in the court before. It was a lawyer who knew how to blow things out of proportion. And now, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Ray. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I never really backed myself into a corner here, but maybe it's by, uh, I think it's the other Let's guard down a bit. Keep us waiting in the new longer, Mr. Ray. I'll present the evidence to court. This is the defense final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's... Your Honor. Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clear, clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tiger. What? But Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone here knows what the bottle contains, except one man and one person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. A prince drawing that pansy looking bottle, and is that what you're just saying? Well, what the heck's in it anyway? A phony trial, a phony lawyer, and a phony clue. Everything about this case has been phony the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. To Tiger, this is the decisive evidence, uh, decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Pessim cyanide. 
All it contains potassium cyanide. But potassium cyanide. Poison used to murder Mr. Elgar, Your Honor. Victim's killer used this very bottle. On this, on this bottle, Mr. Tiger, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? R? You make a, you make a good clown, you know that? What? You say never gonna get this to stick. Use it just making you laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? Well, this is straight through your Phoenix, right? And the bottle with the cyanide in it. Got him. This is the bottle we found trying to stick the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger. We're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown and it was made of glass. A cheap piece of trash. Don't nothing like it. Oh, we steaming, man. Got him. At last. And what? Why's everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle of the I was in. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy looking stupid fool you people. That always is playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell him that guy. Tell, tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. Still haven't figured it out. Didn't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. You really had nothing to do with this murder. You shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle of the potassium sign I was in. Err. Err. Just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Er, um, you just don't know what you was messing with. On the tiger, I control millions of dollars on the black market. You just think I'm going to do some jumped up suit at the better of me? Sure. The last piece of evidence was phony. That's just what you deserve. A phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. Rar. 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 He's now committed nuclear uh, homicide. What's going on? It was like a blackout. Well done, trite. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe, but... <laughs> But if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Why did that get me? Now then, how are things going, Mr. Tiger, Mr. Godot? He's being arrested on the suspicion of the murder of Manel, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, he managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. In the absence of a genuine evidence, the Tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Your tiger is a truly frightening criminal. Huh. A truly frightening one. The defense attorney over there. Good dog. Well, I am now in a position, position to deliver my verdict. Uh, okay. The court finds the defendant, defendant Maggie Bird. Sorry, when I see my bit rate dropped to 200 uh, kilobytes a second, I kind of panic. But that was for the darkness scene. It was just the eyeballs. <laughs> I read that part. That's all the cores adjourned. I mean, we're gonna we might do like a run of uh, Crush the Dead Gods before we uh, stop here. It is the late, it's one quarter to one. Hey, Mr. Ray, I, I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. So I'll do like one run or two, maybe two, it depends. Probably just one, though. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all the trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. 
Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was a tiger. Look, Nick. In the doorway. It's the gumshoe. Oh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. Wait. Ellipses. That's the gumshoe. Uh, oh, yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in the testimony, then? Huh? Oh. Well, I was... Well, I guess I'll be heading off, then. See you around. What up, detective? You just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you? It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. It wasn't even any of use. But... Only because Mr. Hart used it so cleverly. That the gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Like, she still isn't ready to forgive him. Did you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help a gumshoe. He clearly needs it. Uh, Maggie? You know, I think gumshoe's been really worried about you through all this. Um, I wanted to believe that, sir. On the first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to respect the facts. He got at me, that's why. He thought I might have done it. I gotta prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know, I'll give her the pre little presents to celebrate the freedom. Fucking Gumshoe's lunchbox. Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. And that's a present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. Detective Gumshoe. Hi. We've had that for like, what? How long? I actually really like what we needed to know. Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Probably dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this? No? Bro, we see he's done it. How was it, Maggie? It's... it's really good. Red? Uh, the false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows, maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Oh, I can touch my controller for this one. It's over. It's over. We have what, like two or three more episodes? I think we have two more episodes. I can't believe it. she meant a recipe for turnabout. Alright, well, um, we will save the game, and I will be switching to Curse of the Guns, but I will take like five minutes, so. The girl, I'm moving to this, the girl let her go. Shut up, I'm closer. I kill her. Sorry. But you are not going to get the chance. Bang. Looking through a file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Picture data one. Name Terry Falls. Cage kidnapping murder. Charge kidnapping murder. Sentence of penalty. Fugitive moments. Picture after escaping falls uh, met with. And then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Captured in Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had originally broken out of prison. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. Six years earlier, Mia Fey for his trial. Alright, give me a save, give me a save. Okay. I'm gonna switch games. And, uh, we'll do a run or two, what's it called? 
I will be right back.